In this example, we will look at how to completely solve a circuit from first principle using KCL, KVL and Ohm's law only. Consider this circuit. This circuit has one independent current source, one independent voltage source and this component is a dependent source. There is an arrow inside the symbol. This means that this is a dependent current source and its magnitude is in terms of another circuit current. So this dependent source is a current controlled current source. The procedure of solving a circuit using a KCL, KVL and Ohm's law is as shown here. Uh, the main steps are to label the branch currents and then mark the voltage polarities across the resistors. Then identify loops and apply K Kirchhoff voltage law to each loop. Identify nodes and apply Kirchhoff current law to each node. Keeping in mind that we must have the number of circuit equations equal to the number of unknown variables. So let's see how this process can be applied to this circuit and solve to find the power associated with all the circuit elements. Because of this current source, the current in this branch is 5 amps. This branch current is labeled already I5. Because of this branch, this dependent source, the current in this branch is 2I5. Let's label this branch current as I. And also, let's label this node as node X. In this circuit, we have one, two, three possible loops. Let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to this loop only and let's label this loop A. So Kirchhoff voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero and we use passive sign convention in writing the terms for the Kirchhoff voltage law. So let's start here. Uh, in order to do that, we need to mark the voltage polarities across the resistor. So the end where the current enters is labeled at higher potential and the end where the current leaves is at lower potential. And similarly for this resistor, we can mark the voltage polarity as follows. Now let's write the circuit equation for loop A starting at the independent voltage source. So going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So this is written with a positive sign plus 70. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. And we can write the, the value of the voltage rise using Ohm's law. So this is minus 30 I phi. And then going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So this is 10i is equal to 0. Next, let's apply Kirchhoff current law to this node. So Kirchhoff current law states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving a node. So this at this node, we have 5 amp current entering and there are 3 currents leaving. So this gives 5 is equal to i phi plus i plus 2i phi. So we can see that we have two equations and two unknowns and these can be solved to obtain the solution. Using a scientific calculator, we can solve these equations to show that i is minus 1 amp and i phi is 2 amps. Hence, we obtain the solution as I is minus 1 amp and I phi is 2 amps. Now we can find the power associated with all the circuit elements. First, let's look at the voltage sources, voltage and the current sources. So the power associated with the voltage source is the product of the voltage times the current. So what is the current through this source? We can see that at this node, I is entering, 2 I phi is entering. Therefore, this current is I plus 2 I phi. 
So the power associated with the voltage source is the product of the voltage and the current which is I plus 2I5. We can see that this current is entering the terminal marked plus. So we write the power formula with a plus sign. Substituting the values, we can show that this evaluates to plus 210 watts. The final answer is positive and this is saying that this voltage source is absorbing power in this circuit. Let's look at the current source. The power associated with the current source is the product of the voltage and the current. We can see that this current source is connected in parallel with this resistor. So we can use the resistor to find the voltage drop across the current source. So the current power dissipate, so the power associated with the current source is the voltage and the voltage is 30i5 and the current is 5 amps. We can see that this current i5 uh, this current is so this is then the associated voltage polarity and we can see that this current is entering the terminal marked minus so we write the power calculation with a minus sign. Substituting the values this gives minus 300 watt so this is showing that the current source is generating power in this circuit. Next let's take a look at the dependent source. So the power associated with the current source is the product of the voltage and the current. So same as before we will use the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor which is connected in parallel with the dependent source to find the voltage across the dependent source and this will have the same polarity as here. So this is given by the product of the voltage which is 10 times I and the current which is 2I5. We can see that the current is entering the terminal marked plus. So we write the power calculation with a plus sign. Substituting the values this gives minus 40 watt. The two remaining elements are the resistors. So the power associated with the 10 ohm resistor. The resistors always dissipate power. So we can use the formula I squared R to find the power dissipated by the resistor. And this is given by 1 times 10. So this is plus 10 watt and then finally the power associated with the 30 ohm resistor is I phi squared R because the current through this resistor is I phi and substituting the values this gives 120 watts. If we sum up all the powers in this circuit so 210 minus 300 minus 40 plus 10 plus 120 we get 0. So this means that all the power generated in the circuit is equal to all the power absorbed by the different circuit elements and this circuit therefore satisfies the power check. We can easily verify the solution using LTSpice. This is the same circuit drawn in LTSpice. This is a test source having zero volt magnitude which is connected in series with the path that has the current that is controlling the magnitude of the current controlled current source. Please have a look at other videos in this series which show how to properly simulate dependent sources in LTSpice. So we can simulate this circuit and then we can bring the cursor on each circuit component and we can see that for this case the current source is dissipating power is is generating power 300 watts the dependent source is generating power 40 watts the independent voltage force source is dissipating power plus 210 watt and for the resistors the powers are as we calculated.
So this confirms the solution.